Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The stone die has been trimmed and is lubricated with microfilm. The margin has been marked with a dark colored wax pencil. After the dye has been properly lubricated, then a thin layer of soft green wax is placed on the entire surface of the dye. The soft green wax will give a very accurate adaptation to the surface of the dye. It is important that the wax is adapted well down the grooves. Uh, this is done by placing the wax and then reheating so that there's no bubbles in these areas. You'll note that the layer of wax is very thin. This is important because additional Duralay and blue wax will be added to this. And if this wax is too thick, then it does not allow sufficient room for the other layers. This is brought just up to the finishing line and Wax also is applied to the occlusal surface, again keeping it thin. When this has been completed, then a thin layer of Duralay plastic is applied to the peripheral surface and the occlusal surface of this pattern. It's important again that this layer of Duralay is thin so that it allows room for the addition of the other blue wax that will be applied later. This is kept just short of the margin and is applied down the grooves and across the occlusal surface. It's important when applying this Duralay to the occlusal surface that the Duralay is kept thin because if it is too thick, it will interfere with the proper occlusal anatomy and occlusal buildup. However, small areas where the wax shows through should be covered with a thin layer of Duralay. This then is allowed to harden and then a small amount of Duralay is placed in the centric stop area, opposing the lingual cusp of the maxillary molar. This centric stop is registered after the Duralay loses its gloss. You can test this by closing the articulator, and when this is in the proper place and the proper height, then the shims are removed and the articulator is moved from centric relation to centric occlusion so that we have a long centric developed on our mound of plastic. This then will give us a sturdy index of this long centric for this molar pattern. You'll note the placement of the amount of Duralay in the occlusal registration. It's important also to remember to lubricate the opposing teeth. Wax is placed in the bicuspid, and you'll note that we are hollowing out the wax in the occlusal and box area. This is important because we need room for Duralay in the box and occlusal isthmus area to give strength to this delicate pattern. The Duralay is teased into the grooves and across the lingual surface. It is important to have a thin layer on the occlusal surface and the lingual surface, again to allow room for a proper addition of blue wax during the subsequent waxing. Thin layers placed also on the occlusal surface. A mound of Duralay again is placed on this bicuspid in the centric stop area. The articulator is closed 
and we pick up an indentation of a maxillary lingual cusp after the duralay has lost its sheen and gloss. Articulator then is moved from centric relation to centric occlusion, and this long centric is recorded on the occlusal surface of the duralay mound. At this point, the pattern is removed from the dye. It's important to verify whether the pattern is accurate and that it does come off the dye. If we spend a lot of time waxing and find that the pattern cannot be removed from the dye, then all that time will be wasted. We check to see if there are no voids in the grooves and that we have picked up the details of the dye. If this looks correct, then we relubricate the dye and place the pattern back in place. You'll note the occlusal long centric registration here. The same is done with the bicuspid. We very carefully and gingerly tease the pattern off the die, being careful not to squeeze it. When this is removed, we examine this pattern also for details. And if it is correct, then we relubricate the die place the pattern back in place. At this point, then, we will adapt wax to the peripheral surface. This should go down to the margin and cover the duralay completely. This pattern has been waxed along the periphery. You'll note that it follows the margins, and it has been polished and has the proper contours. We'll remove it, and you'll see the margins that are marked with a dark wax pencil, and the margins are accurately waxed to that. The occlusal surface has been left shy for the waxing of the cusps and occlusal surface. The bicuspid has been waxed in a similar manner. You'll note that the peripheries are waxed to the margins and have been rough polished and that the occlusal surface has been left for occlusal waxing. You'll note the contact has been prepared and the occlusal stops, and now we will add wax in this pontic area. Three layers of 28 gauge green wax have been layered on the edentulous ridge, and the pontic has been removed from our diagnostic wax up. This can be used for the pontic of our finished bridge. If you desire to keep your diagnostic wax up intact, then a new pontic will have to be waxed. This is roughly positioned, and then the articulator is closed. And once it is closed, then the pontic can be placed accurately in its proper occlusal position. When this has been completed, then we check the alignment of the cusps. The buccal cusp should all line up, and the buccal contour should blend with the other buccal contour, and the lingual cusp should line up. Wax then is used to attach the ponic to the two wax patterns. This will then attach the ponic rigidly to the bicuspid and the molar. The patterns have been completely waxed, and you'll note the gingival contour of the potic, and the contact has been waxed. The interdental space has been waxed. The margins have been waxed accurately and have been polished. You'll note as we look from the anterior that the buccal cusp of the ponic matches the buccal cusp of the bicuspid and molar, and that the lingual cusps all seem to line up harmoniously, and the lingual surfaces form a natural surface. As we look at the occlusal surface, the, there are centric stops on the buccal cusps, and centric stops, in this case in red duralay, 
in the central fossa. Now we are ready to invest and cast the components of the bridge. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.